My name is Isaac McCoy and I am a graphic designer. My name is Stacy Brown and I'm the president and CEO of a sign and graphics company. My name is Parker Nguyen and I'm a college student. My name is Michelle Bannister and I work for a Fortune 100 company that's in government contracting. I'm on the organizational development team. All the research says that absolutely we're companies all over of all sizes and all different verticals are seeing more and more employees self-report higher levels of anxiety, more stress, more burnout, more overwhelm. And a lot of companies are investing more and more in well-being initiatives. So our business is a little bit stressful, right? And so I can tell when my team members maybe they're just at their limit, right? Giving people the flexibility and the space and actually saying out loud, if you have something you need to deal with, if something's going on, let me know. Let's figure out how we can make it work for you. Maybe you have to deal with something. Maybe you're you know, under the weather. The other thing is I try to pay attention. I think it's important to support workers' mental health because when your workers are happy and they're flourishing, then the company does better as a whole. I would say in general terms of a mental health friendly workplace would be allowing employees to like have time that they need to take off to take care of their mental health needs, to go to their appointments, because when you don't have that, it's kind of hard to you know, maintain good mental health. And as far as like on site, I would say companies could understand that employees may need to take longer breaks or whatever they need to really perform their best. I think that a mental health friendly workplace is a place where no one has to live in fear because the work that they do, the quality of the work that they do, their credibility and expertise is not going to be called into question. As somebody who, who has a mental health condition myself, I have to say there, there are times when I worry a little bit. Thankfully, I work at a company where we are very open. We have a, an employee resource group, especially for people with mental health conditions. And so we're, we're very open and um, honest about the fact that we want to encourage all kinds of people, regardless of what their um, kind of diversity lens would be, to feel welcome to work here, to be able to feel safe and to be able to bring their whole selves to work. I've done various things to help me succeed on the job. One is to ask other employees to kind of sit in and give me kind of on-site training. And a lot of the times the employees are very receptive you know, to that idea. Sometimes I come to work um, after a particularly bad day in my personal life. Maybe I'm just not feeling my best, I'm tired, I'm not as sparkly. And I'm hopeful that when that happens that maybe people won't be as judgmental of me, but just maybe think to themselves, you know, Michelle's just having a bad day, like everybody has a bad day, rather than labeling me, oh, she's that person with the mental health condition, but just give me a little grace. I think it's essential for coworkers to support each other because you're working alongside them, you know, five days out of the week, all year long. I and mean, if you can't feel comfortable around your coworkers, then the work environment is not going to be a positive place. Don't treat them just like a coworker. Treat them as your friend. Treat them as you know, a human being, ask about their day. I think people think that mental health is something else or only for certain people, but everyone has to deal with their own mental health, right? And I think particularly in a small business, I want a family culture, I want people to feel safe. And so I really do want people to feel like it's okay. If things are overwhelming them or if they just have something going on personally and they need to take time, because that's how I treat my family. And so I want to treat all of my team members the same way. I would say that you would need a very finely tuned work-life balance. So finding a way of getting the things that you know you need to succeed on the job, even if you're not asking for your accommodations from your employer, just finding ways of meeting your needs so that you can perform on the job, you know, and, that, and that'll show in the quality of your work and that'll show in the skills that you build over your work. A mental health friendly workplace benefits the employer in so many ways. For example, if we're known as a mental health friendly workplace, then we're able to attract lots of diverse kinds of talent and they'll immediately feel like, yes, this is the place for me. I feel really comfortable here. I'm gonna be welcome here. There are gonna be resources where I can feel supported here. That's a place where you know loyalty starts to show up, higher levels of engagement are gonna come forward. If a company invests in their employees, they're essentially investing in the success of their company. By helping employees deal with mental health or stress or you know anything along those lines, the employee's work is gonna benefit from that automatically. 
I think understanding goes a lot farther than people think because with understanding comes more people working in positions that they're qualified for and with understanding comes a small amount of accommodations people need to join the workforce and participate in economic growth. Mental health friendly workplaces are more important than ever. And all of us have a role to play in promoting them. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org.